when my professional life started in the kitchen, I, I had children at home and I was married. And um, so most of the shows that I did were very family centric, family based. And since then, a lot of my life has changed. My children have grown up, they have moved out, and I'm in the middle of a divorce. And we're gonna, what we're going to start off with is really simply some salt and pepper. This is a real daisy moment. I'm going to add a little white vinegar. Or you could add cider vinegar. That's good too. And what does this do? This is going to act as the vehicle for the salt to enter the chicken. So it really flavors the chicken. Because salt moves from a more salty space to a less salty space. Juicy plump chicken. That's what the vinegar is going to help to do. You could do this the night before, but no less than an hour, I would say, to really get um, the flavor into the chicken. And then once that's done, we'll go ahead and coat our chicken. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a process. It's a process. And you have to count on the stuff that's at your core to get you through not, not just the good times, but the, but the difficult times too. And um, since it was always um, going into the kitchen and, and working out my stress on whatever it was, whether it was making bread or a galantine or, or tamales or pasteles or what, what, you know, whatever it was, um, you know, I channeled my energy and all I can say is that most of my close friends have gained between 10 and 15 pounds. And, and I'm sorry. Not really. <laughs> But I'm very grateful um, to them for sharing, for you know, for sharing this um, and making this journey a little easier for me. And it's it's still it's still all about food for me. Life, there isn't a, a significant moment in my life that I can't attach a dish to. That's food for me. Okay, so I'm going to start out with two cups of AP flour, all-purpose flour. go ahead and I'm going to add some matzo meal. Matzo meal, you say. Why not breadcrumbs or panko even? You're going to find that matzo gives you a really crisp coating, which is like, that's the treat on fried chicken, isn't it? I went out with a friend the other day and he ordered fried chicken at a restaurant and then proceeded to peel off the co all the coating off the chicken. What's the point of ordering fried chicken if you're going to peel the, and throw away the coating? That's like the best part. I mean, for that, order the grilled chicken, right? Listen, I'm tempted to eat all that coating. I don't need to do that. I didn't order the fried chicken. Okay, so equal parts matzah and flour. Let me get, set this aside. And then I'm going to go ahead and add one teaspoon of baking powder. Again, baking powder is one of those things that you have to keep fresh. Don't have baking powder in your pantry for like four years and expect it to do anything when you use it. So any, any, any like six months, I, I would get rid of, uh, after six months, I would get rid of your baking powder. So one table, one teaspoon, sorry. And then I'm going to add one teaspoon of smoked Paprika, or if you don't want the smoky flavor, which I love, um, you can go ahead and use regular paprika. And what's fried chicken without some Old Bay? I'm going to use two teaspoons of Old Bay. And then I'm going to use one tablespoon of salt and some fresh ground pepper. And then let's stir that all up. Trust me, this is some chicken that's finger licking good. You know, and if, if you think about it, all our lives, uh, food is, it, you know, we, we celebrate with food. We share our condolences with food when somebody dies. Um, you know, if your girlfriend gets a divorce, you're going over there with two pints of Haagen-Dazs. You're gonna, you know, 
You're going to accompany her in her misery. Um, there's nothing that, um, there's no event in my life, certainly, that I can't attach a, you know, a certain food for. Uh, the first day it snowed um, every year, my grandmother would make a pot of sancocho, which is a pot of um, a Puerto Rican um, root vegetable stew with uh, chicken and pork and beef. And I would be in, I, would, I was in college and I would be looking out the window watching the snow come down with a smile on my face, knowing that when I got home, there'd be a bowl, a bowl of sancocho on the table. It was, you know, that to me was comfort. Um, a bowl of my mother's chicken soup. Um, you know, you have memories of being, um, of having a cold or the flu when you were a little kid and your, your mom would always spend that extra amount of time with you when you were like that and bring you a bowl of soup. That's comfort food, that's love. That's someone telling you and showing you that they love you. And for me, I've been lucky enough to be the recipient, but also lucky enough to to be the bearer of that hug, of that love, um, to, you know, to make other people feel better. So, if if I have the opportunity to receive love in the shape of food, or to give love in the shape of food, there is nothing more comforting to me than that. Who doesn't like fried chicken? I mean, everybody has their own version of fried chicken. Um, in Puerto Rico, we love fried chicken. Down here in the United States, down south, they love fried chicken. Uh, Korean fried chicken is like the new hot commodity on, uh, on, on the market. And it's all about the coating. But a, a good, fresh chicken with a crisp coat, that's, it's not going to get soggy, even when, like, even when you let it get cold. Because that's like, that's like a drag, you know, because cold fried chicken is delicious, right? So you want a coating that's going to stand up. To, um, I also like to play, it's going to stand up to, to test the time. I also like to play with, with sauces. You know, I'm making um, a, a, a honey uh, um, chia sauce today, but you know what else works really, really great? You take a ripe banana with like a cup of ketchup, you throw in some cheetahs in there with some red cider vinegar and you blend it and you have banana ketchup, which is so good on fried You Clean up the jewel on your, your face, though. <laughs> And I'm going to start out with a half a cup of um, freshly squeezed lime juice. Then I'm going to add a quarter cup of champagne vinegar. If you don't have champagne vinegar, you can use whatever vinegar you'd like. A little more than a quarter cup. Let's say a quarter cup and a teaspoon. Okay of uh, honey. I'm going to add some chiles. Mm. Mm. I have some jalapeno here. And of course this is going to be a nice spicy sauce. So I want to add all of those ribs. And I have some beautiful serrano chiles. Throw those in there too. And I'm going to add some salt. Now with salt, when, you, when you're dealing with citrus, you want to really be careful because citrus and salt cancel each other out. This is the part where I have my friends coming to my house and actually drinking this sauce. I have to say, no, please don't do that. We're going to add two sticks of melted butter. Well, hello, sailor. Wow, is that good? You don't get the heat right away. You First, you get the sweetness of the honey and the tang of the citrus and the vinegar, and then it gets warm. Then it warms up in your mouth. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, you you, you got you got <laughs> you got to meet a certain standard, and I'm sorry, but to meet 30 or 40 minutes to make something that I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be peeling layers of my clothes off and 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 crying hail mary because it's so good. It's worth 30 or 40 minutes of my life as opposed to five minutes. And what what I'm eating is has stuff in it. First of all, that ingredients I can't pronounce with 26 letters after it, there's color that doesn't belong in there because it has numbers and 26 letters after it. Um, so yeah, if you're particular about what you put in your mouth too, I'd, I'd say go with the 30 or 40 minutes. It's, it's an investment well worth the effort. <laughs>